So Abrams, the it's been pretty scary since uh, North Korea started making its advancements in 2017. I look over and I see Senator Kyle, and during the five years and five years and eight months, you are out of this party, out of the uh, the committee, and out of the Senate. What we've seen, the number of uh, the, the activities that are taking place from, from North Korea, they've conducted 13 successful ballistic missile launches, and the scariest one was on November the 28th of 2017, one that demonstrated clearly that they had the range that we had hoped that they would not have. So we have now, uh, it's a different situation that we've had for a lot of years. They have achieved some successes in their eyes, that are pretty scary to us. And while the testing has paused, North Korea's nuclear and missile programs have, have matured. Its missiles can now reach the entire United States with a nuclear payload, and that's pretty serious. After a period of increased tensions, the Singapore summit was a step in the right direction. Recent meetings with uh, President Moon and Kim Jong-un have shown that there's really progress. The fact that they just had their meeting together in North Korea, and they are now uh, talking about doing it again in South Korea. That's something we would not have anticipated even a year ago. So we've made uh, a lot of uh, progress in that respect. So why don't you tell us, I think uh, 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 this is a good hearing, General Abrams, your assessment of the current security situation on the peninsula. The fact that we've now had the meetings that I addressed, and we've also had uh, a presence uh, in, in uh, 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 both North and South meeting together. What's your uh, feeling about that? Chairman, uh, the situation on the peninsula today, as you have just described, uh, I would describe as a, a temporary pause and a, a general feeling of detente, if you will, on the peninsula. It's been over 300 days, as you noted, since the last major provocation from the DPRK. And since then, uh, there's been a significant dialogue at multiple levels to include, not well reported, but mill-to-mill -mill communications between UN Command and the DPRK um, at senior officer level in the first time in 11 years. So I, I would share your characterization that all of the uh, current steps that are ongoing are significant and we should uh, take them at face value. Having said that, you also mentioned that there still remains a significant uh, asymmetric and intercontinental threat from the DPRK, as well as they maintain still the fourth largest conventional army in the world, um, and none of their posture has changed. So my view is that we should remain clear-eyed about the situation on the ground and allow diplomacy to continue <coughs> to work. Well, I appreciate that. Okay, I've been informed we do have a quorum. We have, uh, we'll interrupt this for just a moment here. Since a quorum is now present, I ask the committee to consider the nominations of Mr. Alan Schaefer to be Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition and Sustainment, Ms. Uh, Veronica Dago to be Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness, Honorable Robert H. McMahon to be Assistant Secretary of Defense for Sustainment, Dr. E. K.C. Wardinsky to be Assistant Secretary of the Army and Manpower and Reserves, and Mr. Alex Beeler to be Assistant Secretary of the Army for Energy Installation. Uh, they've been before this committee and we've had a chance to discuss and is there a motion to favorably report this list of five pending civilian nominations to the Senate? So move. Is there a second? second. Yeah, there's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is approved. I would also ask the committee to consider a list of 2,781 pending military nominations. All of these nominations have been before the committee in the required length of time. Is there a motion to favorably report this list of 2,781 so um, uh, pending military nominations? There's a motion, second. Second. Those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Now, um, uh, Mr. Fowler, I've, one of the things I wanted to get to during uh, my time here was to look a little bit at China. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I know that you're concerned about the Southern Command. You've got your work cut out for you there. But if you look all over, we were in the South China Seas. We were very familiar with what China is doing right now. It's interpreted by our allies in that area as they are preparing for World War III. We see in, in areas 
in, uh, in Africa, Djibouti. Uh, they're starting to build. In fact, that's the first time that China, outside of its own territory, has built a military operation. And the same now they're moving down into Tanzania and some of the other areas. Now, you're seeing the same thing happen, I assume, in uh, the, uh, in the uh, uh, Southern Command. My concern is that uh, the programs that you, I know that you are, I've talked to you in my office, that you're very uh, favorably inclined toward, uh, one of them being the IMET program, where C and, and foreign military investments, foreign military sales, and all those programs. But the IMET program is one that has been very successful all over the world. And it's one that China has now figured out. And in, in the case of Africa, they've had a meeting where they had 53 of the presidents of, uh, of the 54 countries in Africa actually meeting there on a new type of an IMET program that would bring their allegiance away from us, which had been successful. I'd, I'd like to have you um, share with us, first of all, your, your feeling about these programs, why they're significant, and, uh, uh, and, and, what, uh, and is China doing the same thing in the area that you're going to be in as they are in the rest of the world? Senator, the uh, 2018 National Defense Strategy calls out China as a strategic competitor. And as the Secretary of Defense recently commented, uh, we continue to see both Russia and China uh, try to shape a world consistent with their authoritarian worldview. We see that in, uh, in the Southern Command and uh, area of responsibility where China is moving in with low interest loans uh, with strings attached uh, for ports, uh, the Panama Canal, for example. The program that you speak of, sir, IMED, is, a, is one of our best tools to build long-term trust with officers at all levels uh, to bring students to the United States, to educate them in our military doctrine, our tactics, and really do an in-depth uh, study together. Uh, during a recent trip, some of the leaders I met were graduates of our War College, and they are lifelong mm -hmm. friends of the U.S. So the best way to counter this competition was the power of our education, our ideas, Senator. Yeah, and it really is a concern to me because uh, everywhere I go, everywhere in the world, you run into people who were, uh, who were results of the IMET program. And uh, it's, it seems like China has not been that active, but they are right now, and I anticipate you're going to see that in your command also. Senator Reid. 